I took the blame. And, uh, and he said, well, what happened exactly? I said, it's a blob of plastic. It won't fit into my computer anymore. I cannot download the program. He said, no problem. I'll send you another one. I said, and how much will that be? He said, it's free. You know, it's probably about 10 cents of plastic in the, uh, in the CD, but forget about it. Don't worry. Just give us your serial number. We'll send you another one. I said, wait a second. I don't think you understand, Bill. I know you're a smart guy, but my daughter dropped the CD in the toaster. It's finished. It's destroyed. He says, don't worry. Nothing was damaged. You know why? Because software is spiritual. That's why. And if you don't believe me, take an empty CD disc, weigh it, and then load it with three or four hundred bucks worth of software and weigh it again. Tell me if you tell the difference. <laughs> Nothing has changed. Software is spiritual. Well, I was really into this. I thought this was terrific. I took my brand new IBM ThinkPad, tossed it into Puget Sound. I thought, it's time to get another one. Call up IBM, they said, sorry, you're going to have to call China, the nobles brought the company, call China, speak to them. Hey, listen, you guys are just as good as Microsoft. No, we're actually better. They said, all right, well, in that case, we'll be interested to hear what Microsoft did. When my CD dropped in the toaster, got destroyed, they just sent me a new one, and my uh, laptop fell into the ocean, and I'd like to give you my address. Long pause, can we have your credit card number, whatever for? Well, you're going to have to buy another one. And uh, I said, I don't understand. They said, let us give you a little lecture on physical and spiritual. <laughs> Hardware is physical. It's easy to destroy. And when you've destroyed it, you've destroyed it. Software is spiritual. You cannot destroy it. How about music? Let's say you really, really do not like the tune, the song, Face Sarah, Sarah, which I will spare you a rendition of. And you decide you'd like to kill that song and make sure it vanishes off the world. Do you have any way of doing that? Totally no way of doing it, because music is software. It's indestructible. How about you really don't like that electric guitar your son got for Christmas? No any way of solving the problem? Yeah, it's called a fire. Hardware is musical instruments. Physical is musical instruments. Spiritual is the music itself. Spiritual is the software. What about, by the way, just to put on my rabbi hat and not my engineer hat for the moment, our bodies, physical or spiritual? Physical, easy to destroy. Souls? Obviously, spiritual. Yes. Now, let's take, uh, let's take a woman who comes in to see the doctor. She's expecting a baby and she says to the doctor, I'd like to uh, have a few questions answered if you don't mind. The doctor says, so he says, you equipped here to give me tests? He says, we can give you the full barrage of tests, whatever you want. She says, terrific. First thing I'd like to know is, am I having a boy or a girl? Is that possible? And the uh, doctor does a little test. He says, it's a little girl. She says, okay, terrific. She says, I'd like to know, is she likely to be black or white? <laughs> Doctor raises his eyebrows just slightly and says, hold on, we'll run a little test here. Come back, she says, uh, if the baby's black. She says, okay, fine. Uh, could you tell me if the baby is going to have a tendency to be a little on the plump side or very thin and slender? Doctor says, no problem, I'll tell you that as well. And uh, she says, I'd now like to know whether uh, this child is going to grow up to be an honest person. I'd like to know if the child is going to be a loyal friend. I'd like to know if she's going to be an optimistic person. I'd like to know if she's going to be able to be resilient. If she's going to be courageous and not cowardly. What does the doctor say to all of those things? He says, uh, they're all very important things, madam, but I cannot help you. You're asking me for spiritual characteristics. There is no instrument available that can measure spiritual characteristics. Now, if any one of you wants to hire somebody for your business, let's say you are looking to hire somebody to develop your business, a salesperson to develop and increase the demand for whatever goods or services you provide. And the person is going to come into your business and is obviously going to produce far more revenue than their salary and commission is going to cost. And they come through the door. How much do you care if they're black or white? It's not just a case of bigotry. 
you have to be an idiot to care. Because we're talking spiritual qualities, not physical qualities. Would you care if a person is male or female? Why ever? Why would you? Would you care if they're on the plump side or on the thin side? Not really, it's not a big factor. Would you care if they're honest or not? I think so. No matter what any psychologist tells you, there are no tests for measuring the future honesty of an employee. It ain't possible. Fortune magazine ran a story five years ago that the most ethical and honest company in the United States of America is Enron. That was on Fortune magazine five years ago. Um, and it was, based, it was based partially on the battery of psychology tests that Enron used to administer to new employees. They only hired ethical people. Everybody knows that. That's why it is one of the most ethical companies in America. Friends, there is no way to measure spiritual qualities. Uh, there is no way to measure what kind of music will make people happy and what kind of music will make people sad. It takes the genius of a human mind, a songwriter or a composer. Nobody else can do it. There is no instrument that you can crank up and say, turn me up some music that will make men march off to war. Write me some music that will bring a lump of sadness to your throat. There isn't such a machine because these are spiritual characteristics, not physical characteristics. And we human beings are very focused in our lives, whether we see it or not, on the spiritual. Things happen and we recognize it. A little while ago, a few months ago, just an ordinary guy, like each and every one of us, flung himself onto the tracks in front of an unrushing subway train in New York City. Rescued somebody. It was a guy with mental problems, jumped into the track. And somebody else, this other guy, former serviceman in the United States Army, jumps in, saves the man's life. Why didn't everybody say what an idiot he was? If we are nothing but physical human beings, if there is no spiritual side to us, then it's really dumb to risk yourself for somebody else. There is absolutely no way. Uh, Charles Darwin could never explain human altruism. There isn't a way of explaining it. The soldier who throws himself onto a grenade to save the other guys in his unit. Don't explain that. It ain't possible. If you insist that we live in a world of only the physical, then there is no way to explain when human beings do things like that. And there is no way to explain why the New York Times didn't run a lead story saying, Hey, look at that idiot. we got two mentally deficient guys. One mentally deficient guy jumps onto the track, and the second mentally deficient guy jumps down there to say, What a stupid thing to do. Why don't we say that? Because even the New York Times recognizes that we are made up of the spiritual just as much as the physical. We have two eyes in us, the physical and the spiritual. If you look at reality with only a physical eye, you'll miss your target. Because you don't understand that your customers are just as much spiritual as they are physical. You don't realize the people working for you are just as much spiritual and physical. You don't understand that the people reading your advertisements, and you don't understand that your vendors are all people who are just as much spiritual as they are physical. You are handicapped. You are trying to do business without understanding a most critical aspect of all the most important people in your professional lives. That is the tragedy and the hopelessness of people who try and conduct business with only one eye, the physical eye, and not the spiritual eye. My book, Thou Shalt Prosper, The Ten Commandments for Making Money, uh, made a lot of people nervous when my literary agent was shopping it around New York publishing houses it made people extremely nervous, and I'll tell you why. It made people nervous because there are a lot of Jewish people in publishing, and they got uncomfortable with the opening premise of the book. The opening premise of the book is that you have